who was a bunch of wild people running all over the place, totally out of control. No, just kidding. It was a wonderful school, was and probably still is the best public high school in Washington, D.C. I don't really remember because I haven't thought about that, but it was pretty normal like any other school in the 50s. Uh, it was a great time. The, the 50s was probably the best decade of this century, that century. We're in the next one, aren't we? And uh, for a lot of reasons. Uh, the music, what was going on in the world, how powerful the United States had become since the end of World War II. Uh, it was just a, it was a great place to be, to live, to work. Went away to college, came back to Washington, joined my family real estate business, which was started by my grandfather in 1906. And so it was a wonderful time in business as well as the school. With a lot of things I remember about the school, particularly the fact that the best teacher I ever had was here at Wilson, not college. Her name was Dr. Regis Boyle. She taught both English and journalism. I took both. And because of her liking uh, of what I did, she got me a position as a reporter, sports reporter, uh, for the Washington Post, and actually a job. On Friday nights, I would go to the Post and act as a stringer. That's what they called people who answered the phones and gave people like you we wanted to know the score of the Wilson Western game, the score. And so it was just a simple answer the phone, give out facts, and uh, the high school community got aware of what had happened. So that was fun. But I also was asked by the Post to cover two games as a reporter. And one was uh, Wilson Western football game. And I got a byline in the Washington Post and five bucks. I also got to cover a D.C. teacher's Gallaudet football game. And if you've never seen, what do you call the people who go to Gallaudet? Not deaf, deaf, play football. It's fascinating. And I got five bucks again and another byline. So that was a real thrill. And uh, when I graduated from Wilson, the, I was offered a, a job by the Washington Post sports department. My parents thought I should go to college instead, and so I did. But the memories are great. I love the idea of writing sports and participating in sports. To me, sports is my first love, other than my family, of course. But I enjoyed the sports I played here, and uh, I can name names of the people that I played with, and I even have a picture of my high school baseball team if you want to talk about it yet. Well, this is a picture of Wilson High School Tigers baseball team, 1956, that played at Griffith Stadium where the Washington Senators played. And we got beat by Anacostia uh, and was by the fastest pitcher I ever played against. Anyway, he made it to the New York Mets. His name was Craig Anderson. His record with the Mets, which was a terrible baseball team then, was 3-22. and 22. And no one's heard about him since. But I've been looking for him, and I can't find him, even though I've Googled him. Anyway, this is the team. And in yellow are names of some of my teammates. Second base. I was pretty good. Uh, but the best player on the team was the first baseman, Lou Luce. And Lou, in my opinion, was the greatest athlete that ever came out of Wilson High School and possibly in the city's history. He had nine All-Mets. Wow. All-Metropolitan Honor, three years here at Wilson. Wow. So in my mind, he was the best coordinated athlete I ever saw, and I enjoyed knowing him and playing with him and being next to him on the baseball field since he batted first and I batted second and he'd get on base and I'd either bunt him to second base or I'd get hit to get on base or I'd hit a base hit or I'd get a walk and we'd both be on the bases and we were the two fastest guys on the team so we 
ran around the bases and scored a lot of runs. And they had a lot of fun. But there were a lot of other very good athletes on the team. Our coach was Sherm Reese. He was a very good coach. I remember, in particular, the field here at Wilson had a short right field fence. And uh, I had learned at a camp that I went to in Maine from the age of 10 to 17 from the owner who had played professional baseball how to hit the right field. And Derek Jeter is the best I've ever seen in the pros with the Yankees, who knows how to hit the right field. And I see myself doing what he does, because I learned how to do that. So when I would hit the ball over the right field fence here, it was only a ground rule double, because it was too short to be considered a home run. But it was interesting comparison. Well, as I mentioned, the teacher, Dr. Boyle, was a very tough taskmaster. And she uh, was very demanding and expected your best. And so I learned early on to give her my best. And I got rewarded with grades and the offer of a job with the Washington Post and uh, things like that. And I would come back to see her, the only teacher I would come back to see every five years or so, just to touch base, let her know how I was, what I was doing, and find out how she was and how she was doing. And when we had our either, I think, 45th reunion, I invited her to come. And also Grace Carter, who was the Spanish teacher I well remember. And they both came, but neither stayed for the dinner. But at least they got the students got to see them. And uh, I think they got a kick out of it. It's changed tremendously. When I was here in the 50s, I would say there were no more than two African-American students. Uh, one, Olivia Green, I remember very well, was a good friend. Uh, but I did not see the kind of diversity that has taken place in the many years since. Um, it was a pretty uh, all-white, mostly American, not uh, Asian or uh, Hispanic that has transpired since. Well, I showed you a picture of my flat top. That was the rage of haircut style at the time. And there was a barber on Connecticut Avenue across from the zoo who was famous for giving the flat top. And he worked for a man, Milton Pitts, who cut the hair of more presidents of the United States than anybody else. So I knew Milton as well as uh, Mr. Spruce or Sprice or something like that who cut my hair. So it was kind of funny because I have a my first year in college picture with my fraternity brother with that hairstyle still. But I'm sure the yearbook has a, another one. Well, the 50s music still, in my mind, is the best. You can understand the words. You can hum the tunes. And uh, it was the beginning of rock and roll. I'll tell you a funny story about Elvis Presley. You remember him? You've heard of him? Well, I was president of a high school fraternity called Pi Tau Pi. And my social chairman called me um, when we were planning a social event and said, I want to play a record for you, 45 RPM record, uh, of somebody I can get for our dance, party, whatever. And I said, what's the name? He said, Elvis Presley. I said, Elvis Presley? What kind of name is that? He says, just listen. So he played two songs for me, Hound Dog and Heartbreak Hotel. I said, Larry, that's the worst thing I've ever heard. Forget it. He said, no, no, we can get him for 100 bucks. I said, 100 bucks? No, forget it. So that was the beginning and end of my career as a talent scout. We missed Elvis. So. That was interesting, and I don't mind telling a story like that on myself, because I made a mistake. It's a fun story. But I've loved Elvis ever since, and uh, uh, I, I like Simon and Garfunkel a lot as well. I've seen The Graduate uh, with their music more times than any other movie. Well, I remember bell-bottom trousers, where they flared out at the bottom, 
I remember a, a mutton chop, uh, what do you call these things? <laughs> no, no, no. Well, yeah, it's not a, whatever, I can't think. I'm old. Uh, but I, I looked funny, and my hair looked funny uh, when you think about it today. But 10 years after, whatever your hairstyle is now, you'll look back and say, did I really have my hair cut that way? So that's the way it is. It changes. Everything changes. I loved everything about Wilson. It was a wonderful school. Great teachers, great students, friends, fraternities, sororities, uh, sports, uh, great education. Uh, we got more students into college, good colleges, than any other school in the city. And if you meet them at uh, reunions, you'd see how successful many of them became. So it really was a, a great place to go to school. Well, the fraternities were the center of my social life. And we had dances and meetings and got to know each other well, which you can't always do just going to school without a fraternity. And so I don't know whether there are clubs here that have that kind of close relationship. But certainly, you must have clubs. And we had them then. And some were popular and some weren't. And so there were, you know, I mean, it might have been a stamp and coin club or a glee club. I'm trying to think what other kind of clubs there were. Uh, history, uh, social studies. I don't, I don't really know that. But I became a history major when I went to Denison University in Ohio, where I graduated. and. Uh, uh, I really found that a liberal arts school was best suited for me. It was small, co-ed, only had 1,300 students. And because of the education I got here at Wilson, I was prepared. And I did well there. But I was a B-plus, A-minus student here. I probably was you know, in the top 20% for sure, maybe 15% here. But I had applied to schools like Syracuse, Washington Lee, North Carolina, Yale, just to appease my mother. But I never, even though they sent me a uh, wait list uh, response, I threw it away. But I never told her that I wasn't interested in Yale. I had visited it, and it just wasn't for me. But uh, all the other schools that accepted me, um, uh, were good schools and some were very large, but I decided on a smaller liberal arts co-ed school and uh, uh, it was a wonderful education there. Then I came back to Washington and uh, started working for the family real estate business during the day and went to school at night at American University where I took all of my real estate uh, and business courses and uh, that was uh, very good too because I have given all of my Shannon and Lux company archives. The company was sold 20 years ago. We sold it in 90, 1993. Uh, but I've continued to work in the real estate business, but in a more narrow way, area, commercial real estate, brokerage. But all of the scrapbooks from like seven, eight decades, eight or nine decades, are in their uh, archives in their library. So there's not only pictures and articles and um, an interview like this one that was done there, but my son also and my wife, we were all interviewed uh, for that historic record. Go Tigers. The school spirit is what I think of when I think of the school. I have this vision of the football, baseball field, uh, exciting times there. Uh, it was always a friendly, happy school, even though some of the teachers were tough. They made you learn what you needed to learn, to be disciplined, to be self-motivated, uh, even though there was a You have many more resources here today than we had. You have the community pool, which we never had. Uh, and I don't know how many of you use it, but it's nice to have it for yourselves as well as the community. But you also have a fantastic uh, library and these uh, audiovisual resources and the band and the auditorium and the music rooms. 
These are things that not every school, high school, has. And so I would say to you and anybody watching this, if they see it before they go to college, this institution looks better than most colleges in this country. So you've been spoiled, whether you know it or not. So enjoy it.